What's up, Liron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, we're looking at paintings by Stan Miller. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Painting Masters. And today we're covering paintings by Stan Miller, a fantastic artist. Uh, he focuses mainly on portraits and I owe a lot of my stylistic growth and just progress to his painting tutorials. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of them, but he has about 30, I think, tutorials here on YouTube that are incredible. They focus just on the important things, straight to the point, everything that you need, I think, to get started and become really good in watercolor painting. So I'm going to link it down below. I'm very, very grateful uh, uh, to his work because I learned a lot from him. He has this colorful style. You know, he talks a lot about colors don't matter as much. It's more about the values and the drawing. And he keeps repeating that and it really hammer, hammered home the point to me. Uh, and I really took it to heart. And I think a lot of my growth, again, I owe to him. So I want to use this platform to thank him. Um, and in addition to that, uh, he has an, an interesting story. He grew up with, I did a little bit of reading on his website. Uh, he grew up with three brothers, three sisters, like seven children. Um, he uh, currently lives in Spokane. Most of his life he spent there uh, uh, doing a lot of painting classes and spending most of his time painting. Um, and I just really, really love his work. And uh, it, it's, it's just close to my heart because I learned so much from it. Uh, so I highly recommend you check out his tutorials. I will put a link down below so you can see his paintings and, uh, and lessons here on YouTube. Uh, and with that being said, I think there's a lot to learn from his work. He focuses mainly on portraits. Uh, so we're going to look at that and uh, uh, at a few landscapes, not a lot of them. Okay. So with that being said, we can get started. Okay. So let's get started with this uh, first painting. And I wanted to start with this because it's kind of a series of multiple paintings. And what he likes to do is to paint the same person several times to make uh, several studies of them. So that's the first one. And there's actually another one, uh, which I really like. And I thought I'd show you uh, these two together. Uh, this is one of my favorites uh, in the in, in the entire list of paintings we're going to see today. I just love this kind of the way he represents the light here, I guess. The, the drawing is excellent. The values are on point. Um, if you squint your eyes, there's a lot of interest in the main shapes that compose the face. Uh, and I think one of the main uh, things that I like about Stan Miller's work really is he never seems to overwork something. And that's a bit more of a detailed piece. So there is a bit of working on the paint, some glazes, um, but mostly he doesn't rework anything. If you look at the forehead, for example, there's all sorts of blues, um, sorry, greens and, and reds, uh, but it's still all very uh, mingled together. It's done in wet and wet, just a lot of good, uh, a good approach to not overworking anything really. Uh, if you look at these shapes here, very, um, done in, on, on a first try, it seems, which I love. Now, if you look at the beard, that's what, a part that I found really interesting. Notice how there are touches of almost any color here. There are washes, small washes, very light as well of yellow here, a bit of red there, red here, red here, some blue, some maybe even greenish blue uh, around these areas, a bit of red here. So the, the shadows, he uses multiple... Um, Sh multiple colors just to represent the shadows. Let's take a look at the ear. There's a bit of blue here, a bit of red inside the ear. Uh, and really, I owe it to him, my entire approach to portrait painting. And I take it in a bit of a more wacky direction where I really disregard the paint. Uh, what he doesn't do in m most of his portraits from what I've seen, but he does in a lot of them. Uh, and I just took his advice and went straight with it. Uh, match the values, don't care about the color as much. As long as his drawing is accurate, it's all good. Um, he has this even in the shirt, and hopefully you can see this, or the jacket rather. He has this a lot of red here, and then he contrasts it with uh, the blue in this area. So there's a lot of play of of differences and and contrasts in temperature and design and many elements here the background i love how it is done uh here's another one same person so i have to say this one i like more just because of the the way he organized it but this is another fantastic one same you know the blue and red here uh, i love how he balances and this is something that is a theme here he balances 
the more sharp, the sharper edges with the warmer, softer uh, colors. So you have a lot of sharpness here and in the beard and the, all of the details. Uh, and then you have a lot of looseness on the edges. Uh, a lot of blend blends of color here on the on the uh, forehead and and the top of the head. Um, a lot of warm and cool play in the beard as well here. Some burnt sienna ish, um, maybe a bit of umber. I don't know what it exactly is in here. Some probably ultramarine or cerulean, some kind of blue here. Lots of granulations in the background, uh, which I love. A bit of dry brush. Uh, to balance out the softness, just a wonderful, wonderful balance. Now we're coming to a series of paintings that um, are loose, loose portraits, which I love. Uh, and again, a recurring theme here that I want you to pay attention to is how much he doesn't overwork his paintings. He doesn't overwork anything, it seems. Uh, it's just very gentle washes that come together to create this beautiful uh, impression of light and shadow and the structure of the face. Uh, so with this one, there's, if you notice, again, if we zoom in, there's a bit of red here in the eye and the dark shadow of the eye. Uh, there's a bit of purple here, or violet, green in the eyes. Beautiful contrast of the eyes with the overall colors, which probably were the original color, colors of the model. Uh, he leaves some highlights here on top of the nose. Very, very good. And notice how and a lot of people are scared to stretch the... Uh, the contrast and, and push the darks to be darker. Notice how he doesn't he doesn't uh, isn't scared of doing that. So there is a lot of uh, in just this shape. Notice the contrast between the light and dark. <clears throat> but then notice how there is still darker to go. If you look at the example, uh, for example, in the eye. So he builds it up very correctly and accurately in a way that's just beautiful. Um, also a variety of edges. So here it's very sharp. Uh, which is balanced with this more blurred edge so you can feel the shape of the cheek um, because here it's rounded and here it's a cast shadow cast by the nose uh, or perhaps by a different, I don't know, probably by the nose. So uh, you get this very interesting uh, thing. This is mostly a warm painting. Notice how simple he keeps the, the lips here. There's a highlight there, which is a little darker than this highlight, by the way. Uh, and this highlight, th these are paper white, it seems, but this one's more of a skin tone. Um, so beautiful, the yellow under the eyes. Uh, very interesting use of color and also just what I wanted to say that the, he quickly establishes some of the background and uses some dry brush in it as well, so some quick brush strokes. Uh, he uses a flat brush a lot, this is something to have in mind because a flat brush allows you to get the this sh small details with the sharp edge uh, but then again you can cover larger areas if you are interested. Uh, in that. Uh, I used to use a flat brush for a long time after watching his tutorials. Uh, another thing, notice the background here. No one cares. You don't even notice it. It just works beautifully. Uh, a bit of warmth in the cool shadow. Uh, in any case, another good, good example of this. Uh, and the color scheme is very different. I actually much like this color scheme than the previous one. And the reason why it has a lot of um, red, yellow, uh, orange, and then some green, which all work fantastically together, some blue in the eyes. This is more of a subtle, mainly warm, and then a bit of green. But here you get a nicer balance, I think, which I love a lot. Notice these strokes were done kind of when this area was still wet. Uh, and then they blend in very nicely. Uh, the way he pushes the, the the contrast to be very accurate and portray the, the shadows very accurately. For example, the nose is uh, tends to be a little shiny. Um, so you have this shadow here, but he also kept this reflective light coming from the environment. So this was a dark spot, but this area is a little lighter reflecting light from the surrounding surfaces or the, the lighting in the studio or wherever uh, he based this on which works really, really well. I love these strong dark reds. Uh, and when I look at this, I really s see the experience in not uh, overworking anything. This is the main theme here. And my portraits, I love them and I think they're very high level and quality, but I still have that thing where I need to work in several layers and sometimes I feel like I overwork them. And here there's zero overwork. I notice these again were done wet and wet. Very interesting stuff. Another one. This one is very different as well. The lighting is not from the front. It's kind of from the side. So you get this, uh, the shape of the nose here. Uh, and again, if you want to paint faces like this, not <laughs> I don't want to take ownership of how he did this because he did this. But um, you really have to 
uh, relate to the face as a, a, um, a collection of abstract shapes. If you're gonna try and paint an actual nose, you'll probably almost always fail. That's from my, in my experience at least. You have to look at the shapes and see them for what they really are, abstract shapes. Because there isn't a nose, there isn't an ear, there's just the shadows and, uh, and values that make them up. Even in this example, look at the, the edges of the face here uh, at the top right corner. There's nothing really here except for the shadow in the background that makes the hair stand out, okay? Um, uh, notice how interesting the red here. This combination, I love the yellow and purple and green. Absolutely love it. Uh, and he doesn't seem to care too much about the color harmony because there's plenty of... It seems like it wasn't done only by three paints, uh, so not all the paints are harmonious, but when you work like this with lots of color, it just doesn't matter. Uh, it just looks good. Notice this subtle uh, shadow in the, on the um, chin. I always forget how to say chin. Um, with the, you know, the, you can see the bottom border of the face, uh, which is really incredible. Love it. Uh, let's see another one. This is probably one of my favorites, uh, again, uh, on, uh, as well as the first one we've seen, uh, because it's just so good. The contrast here with the background, that if you just take a few steps back and you squint, you can really tell all of the details, lots of highlights where they're necessary. Notice how gracefully this sharp shadow turns into a gentle transition. So you have sharpness here, but then gentle gentle and it just looks so good not overworked love the dry brush strokes here um he works a lot with egg tempera as well which as far as i know just allows you to rework the paint a little longer keeps it wet for a little longer um so some of these may have some of that in them uh here's a beautiful example of darker skin tones and again the color doesn't matter all you have to do is mix the right value and you get this beautiful result and there's so much here and i actually love this one in particular because the colors are stronger, so you, because of the values that are darker. So you have a lot of this kind of orangey and you really have to isolate the color. I'm gonna zoom in in a, in a terrible manner and then you can tell it, it's like a dark reddish brown or, or um, uh, Bordeaux maybe, I don't know. Uh, and then you get all of these blues and yellows and greens. I love the way he mixes the uh, greens. He lets the greens mix with the reds. Just beautiful, beautiful work everything here it's just a ton of colors and as long as you match the value you're good to go this is the main thing i think the value matching and second really is the uh, abstract shapes i think these two concepts if you're struggling with portrait painting all you need is is these um so that we have that now i thought i'd break it up a bit he has a few paintings of venice it's probably one of the only landscapes that i personally saw him paint or cityscapes uh, so i just thought it would be nice to break to put a break between the portrait uh, with this we have this again very realistic qualities to the painting yet still there's a lot of abstraction if you look at the top left corner you see there's not an awful lot of details here this line is a little wobbly but no one cares when you zoom out it just works perfectly well um, the values notice how light it gets the more we get into the depth of the painting it gets so light in fact that you can still see the pencil uh, lines and I wanted to oh this is something important I wanted to comment on this painting. Notice how prominent the pencil lines are. And I always say, I never erase them. I just let them be. They're a part of the painting as much as anything else. So I don't mind them at all. And you can even see them uh, here. You can't see them as much. Uh, here, probably not as well, but I have seen them in some other uh, paintings. But in any case, you can still see them. I don't mind them. They look beautiful uh, to me and the reflections here fantastic reflect really what's going on up here the reflections are kind of a messier mess of more blended in colors that are a little more muted and lose some of their individual individuality which really works well here there are a few very nice ripple effects on the water beautiful beautiful skill for work another one here and it, what's so cool about this one is you can see the reflection of a balcony that you can't see in the painting itself uh, so you see it in the reflection you can't see the top part at all which is beautiful very unique uh, composition as well like the center of attention is in the top top uh, left area uh, there was the the, sh the sky the part of the sky here that leads you all the way up there you stop by and take a look at the beautiful boat here then you go a little upwards into the alley if you will uh, nice dry 
technique on the walls or maybe not even dry it looks pretty wet just a light wash um, I'm not quite literal with my style so this is not the style I want to paint in but I can definitely appreciate it and this is an, another another step back from realism it's not as realistic as some of the works we've uh, seen by Thierry Duval for example but it's still quite realistic. And another one, just love the, the fact that this has a bit of a different um, uh, composition and arrangement and perspective. This is where looking dead front at the boats. Love this. Lots of colors in his landscapes and cityscapes as well, uh, which I love. Uh, and back to some portraits. This one, he does a really good YouTube demonstration. I, I probably talked about this in the intro as well, um, that I really recommend you check out. He demonstrates how he paints this person from a different angle. He likes to paint again the same person several times and it turned out beautiful and it's one of those aha moments. I had a serious epiphany watching this. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything but the values really. But here is more realistic colors and I actually like the looser, freer colors. Uh, look at the background. Lots of um, um, strokes that don't necessarily read as watercolor. They're not as fluid, but still it works beautifully well. Um, a lot of intricate shadows here. All of these uh, lines in the mustache. I wonder if he uses some opaque paint for these or just saves the highlights, which would be probably insane here. Maybe some masking fluid. I don't know. Um, here's another looser one that from a demo he did. I uh, also found this one online. And this is really the, the epitome of it. It's just a bunch of colors and it works out uh, perfectly well. Um, and this is the last one that I wanted to show you, I believe. Uh, yeah. This is the next one is a painting I'm actually working on. Uh, this is the last one. And I wanted to show you this one because it's a bit of a softer um, uh, portrait. It has a bit more of everything blended in together. And for me personally, I actually like the sharper and harsher edges mixed with softer. So this isn't necessarily my favorite style, but it's a bit different from what we've seen so far. Still beautiful. The thing with this one is that it's very hard to make. There's not an, a lot of contrast here. Everything, all of the values are so gentle. This in fact is probably much harder than some of the sharper contrast uh, paintings we've seen so far. If you look at the, the tra soft transition of the cheek going from a very pale pink into a yellow um, and then a bit of blue near where it's really darker, very, very gentle transitions. And these are some of the most challenging paintings, I think. The only places where there are a bit more sh harsher transitions are the hair in this example, which I absolutely love. Uh, so yeah, so this is it. I really hope you enjoyed seeing all of these paintings. A lot to learn from this man. And I owe a lot of my stylistic choices and my stylistic development to his work. Um, I kind of see my work as a combination of many artists because I take some from uh, each one. And it's very clear to see, you know, I think every style uh, has its signature kind of thing. And it's sometimes hard to see your own, but I do start to feel it coming up and building, being built up uh, into something very interesting. I love the colorfulness of his work. I love the looseness of other impressionistic artists like... Um, David Taylor, uh, Alvaro Castanese, Joseph Zbukwich, John Yardley even, uh, more of the British style. Um, I love some of all of these styles and I'm trying to combine it into th something that works well for me and that I enjoy doing. A bit of Tim Wilmot as well uh, that I didn't mention. I love all of these kinds of works. Uh, so in any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I just wanted to, to say again, I owe a lot of my growth to his tutorials. So I'll definitely link them up in the description box below. Stan Miller, you have to check out his work. Thank you so much and I will now do the uh, conclusion for the video. So this is it, as you've seen, mostly portraits, some cityscapes. I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of takeaways uh, to learn from his approach and he really focuses on what's important. So I'm gonna link down below uh, um, his channel and his videos. I think many of you have seen uh, them in the past, some of them I actually went through all of them probably three times uh, already, just uh, in different time periods where I needed help with uh, a specific uh, thing. And I love how he emphasizes um, doing the right work in terms of values and, and drawing rather than technique because technique really comes later on if you want to exploit wet and wet and things like this. The most important thing is to practice, I think, the way he teaches. Um, so this is it. I hope you enjoyed seeing the paintings. Maybe you learned something new. Let me know if there are any artists you want me to cover. I had a weird hiccup here. Um, uh, let me know if there are any other artists you want me to cover. Um, 
or just any type of video you want me to talk about. I actually have a really big video planned for uh, Saturday that I think you're gonna really enjoy. It's a very common mistake I see with uh, beginners to watercolor painting that I think if you just put an emphasis on that, it will really improve uh, your work and it actually relates to what we've seen today. So I just wanna thank you so much for watching. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, it seems like YouTube is messing up my views for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, but I get such good feedback and comments and messages, but the views are a little going down a little. I think, uh, especially when when I talk about percentage compared to the number of subscribers. So that's a bit weird, uh, but all the feedback I get is really good. So I don't know what to say, but I really just, I'm so grateful to anyone who watches my videos. Thank you so much. Uh, you really helped me continue doing what I'm doing. Really appreciate it. And with that being said, I will see you again in another vid on Saturday.